river run, run through the hills, run river run to the sea, run river run to your place beneath the sun, run river run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to Be My Guest. Today we have back with us our resident, well, he's a paranormal researcher investigator. Welcome back, Tom D'Agostino. Oh, thank you. Tom awesome. has, ah, for you <laughs> ghost lovers and paranormal out there, his latest book, he and his wife, Hello Arlene Nicholson, New England's Haunted Route 44. Now, this obviously isn't the book, but this is the cover of it, and it is out now. It's out now, yes. And where can they get it? You can get it at Barnes and Nobles, Amazon Books, all kinds of local bookstores okay. everywhere, yeah. uh, historical societies, you name it. Cracker Barrel. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's the historical societies, too. All right, now, Route 44, we were just talking about that. I used to live in Bridgewater and Brockton. I lived in Kingston near Plymouth. I've been everywhere. So 44, I remember that going through. Mm. What about Bridgewater? i got to ask you that. You know, I lived in Bridgewater, and there's this big thing about there being some sort of a Bermuda Triangle in Bridgewater. The Bridgewater Triangle, yes. What is it? It's an area that was mapped off by a man named Lauren Coleman in the 70s, and it because of this one area, it, it encompasses several towns, including Bridgewater, Rehoboth, and that type of thing, and it's uh, known by, like, the Hockamock Swamp in there, which is a huge swamp, and the Indigenous people actually called it Hakamak, which means place where spirits dwell. Yeah. So f people have seen um, Bigfoots there, they've seen other kinds of cryptids, uh, giant thunderbirds, all kinds of like yeah. wild things. Pakwajis, which is another Indian lore, a little creature about two to three feet tall. And uh, it's just a place where strange things happen. Very strange things happen. Have you guys gone down there and investigated it? We've all? done some of it, yeah, yeah, in some of the places. Because it's so big, you know, you, you never know what's going to happen. There's actually, um, I forgot which town now it's in, but there's actually a Puckwudgie crossing sign <laughs> in the road. <laughs> <laughs> is, it a, is it near the state uh, criminal oh, the town, it's prison? Mm, not that one. I don't think so, no. Okay. But, I could pick, picture where it was because I know the center of Bridgewater... Bridgewater State College, we used to live right there. Mm -hmm. And then you kept going down one road, out kind of towards the woods and towards another town. And it's got to be off there in the woods. Yeah, right it there. takes you to Dighton, um, Freetown State Forest. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing's in there. So Freetown, that's, oh, that's where the Puckwood G.I. thing is in, sign in Freetown. <laughs> we have, you know, there's a Blackstone Valley Express comes out. Well, about once a month, mm, you yeah. can find it. <laughs> I mean, if I go to Shaw's, I keep looking at the out the lodge, the lobby, to see if it's there. Do you know exactly where it comes out? Uh, different areas. I don't, because we we live in Putnam. Um, there's one store that it goes to, and it's gone, you know, instantly. So I have to just go online if I want to see anything. I wish they could mail it to me for heaven's sake. Oh I yeah, would love they probably that. could. But I don't know if they will. Now this caught my eye. This was. August, where are, this is his, his column, where are the remains of Rhode Island's first settler? A mystery in two parts. Now this guy was Reverend Blackstone. Yeah. Tell us about this. Reverend William Blackstone actually, uh, he founded Shawmut, which later became Boston. Yeah. Uh, and what happened was, when he settled, he came over like with the gorgeous expedition. Most of those people went back because you know they, they come in here. They didn't have like you know Lowe's and, and Home Depots to buy things. They had whatever was here. They had to live with, yeah. build uh, you know huts or whatever. So he was more than happy because he loved being alone. So he lived with the natives and everything, and then um, as <clears throat> more and more people came from England and th that area, uh, they started settling with him. He sold his property, which is now the Boston Common. Yeah, I think you said them. he was like a hermit, and then he got yeah. married later in life. <laughs> yeah, and then he then he just got his white bull, which that's what he rode, and his library, which was the largest in the colonies, and he went over to, which is now Cumberland, Rhode Island, yep. and settled in Cumberland, Rhode Island, one year before Roger Williams would settle. See, he was a, Roger Williams settled a colony. Mm -hmm. He was just a lone hermit. And yeah, he got married much later in life. <laughs> and they had a son. And they had a son, yep. And his wife had one also before they got before married. before him two years ahead. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and in 1855, when the saga picks up again, what happened then? Well, he, when he died, he was, he was great friends with Roger Williams. He was great friends with the local natives and everything. But when he passed away, right around King Philip's wartime, 
um, they, they burned his house and uh, he was buried next to his bull and there were two giant coarse markers yeah. to mark off him and his bull. <laughs> yeah. And somebody said, well, this guy was the founder basically of Rhode Island, you know, uh, we need to do something. So they, they wanted to get money to um, make a nice marker for him and everything. Well, the funny thing, this monument never actually appeared and neither did the refunds for the money that they got. <laughs> But then it would be later when they would actually have a marker for him. They'd actually now made a, a nice stone marker for him, and they buried it. They found his remains, and they buried it under the marker. In Blackstone. And, 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 and at Cumberland, actually. In Cumberland. Yeah, he's in Cumberland. right along the Blackstone River, yeah. yeah. Where Ann and Hope is. In Hope is. Yeah, Ann and Hope, the old the, America's first uh, large mill yeah. outlet, Ann yeah. and Hope, yeah. And that was in Cumberland. Yeah, it's in Cumberland, right, yeah. Now... The only thing I know about King, the words King Philip was when I go down 140 and I'm going through Ventham and I see a King Philip High School? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that all tied in with this? Tell us about this King Philip. Uh -huh. King Philip Medicom was um, <coughs> when um, the Massasoit's son, um, Massasoit just means great chief, actually, and what happened was uh, Wins Jonathan Winslow and Massasoit were best buddies, but when Massasoit died, Philip and Alexander, the two sons, um, that's the names they were given, Alexander became king, but he was poisoned, they think, on his way back from Who do you uh, think poisoned? Plymouth. Well, they, uh, he went to talk to the Pl Plymouth Bay Colony and Josiah Winslow, now Jonathan Win Edward Winslow's, I'm sorry, son, Josiah Winslow wanted land. That's all he wanted. He could, and they kept taking land from the you know, natives, the indigenous peoples. And when he went to talk to him, he came back and he, and he died. He was got very sick. And they, uh, Medicom or Philip thought he was poisoned. And at some point, he said, enough is enough. We don't have any more land. Um, we're starving. You took all our hunting grounds. You this and that and the other thing. And the farious moves. And so he started a war to eradicate the English from... So why did they call him King Philip? Because Philip was the name, Medicom was his real name, but he, he for better um, negotiations with the Mass Bay Colony, he had his name changed to Philip. And he was a king. He was uh, the you know chief of uh, the Wampanoags and the Confederacy and all this stuff. Right. And, and he was able to get a lot of other chiefs on board yeah. to um, join him in this war. <laughs> And so, I forget, who won? The English did, and eventually. Okay, so you know. Villages were burned yeah. both on both sides. There was, it wasn't a war of actually soldiers fighting. Yeah. It was a war to eradicate one or the other yeah. from the land. So, women, children, anybody. That was over in Rentham. Yeah, over everywhere. It took place, and um, uh, th that area where Rehoboth is, and all of there, yeah. in in that area, of Massachusetts, in a large section of Rhode Island, was uh, the main focus of the whole war. Even though it went across into Deerfield, Mass, up there, yeah. now somewhere a little into Vermont, a little into New Hampshire, up into Maine, because Maine was part of the Mass Bay Colony at the time. Yeah. But the, it, was, it was a very big concentration. Providence was burned, Warwick was burned, Menden was burned down, um, Brookfield was burned down, they called it Quabog. Yep. Yeah, these whole towns of uh, Springfield burned. God, what about Wilbraham? I grew up. <laughs> nope, they didn't know. <laughs> they probably didn't even exist at that point. No, probably, not that I know of, anyway. <laughs> what are you and um, your wife uh, looking into right now? Usually you're into an investigation and you're in the process of another book. What are you up to with now? We, uh, we just finished doing um, uh, a bunch of Dining with the Dead 1031, those are investigation events. Yeah. It's investigation events where you're the investigator yeah. and we hold them in places that are haunted, like um, the Public House in Sturbridge or the Colonial Inn in Concord or the Hawthorne in Salem. And we, <clears throat> you know, we have a great dinner, we do giveaways, we tell you about the history and the haunts of the place, yeah. and then we break into groups. And after we show you how to use the equipment, you're the investigator and you're using the equipment in each room until all four groups have done all four rooms. How successful is that? Yeah, very. It's very awesome, too, because uh, you get to work with other investigators, learn different techniques, and yeah. you're investigating, you're using the equipment. And then we go over everything and we send all the evidence out to everybody. 
So, and we hope that if they brought stuff, yeah. they send any evidence they got to us so it can corroborate. And it's been very successful because we keep the price down low. Yeah. You know, we're not out to get rich. Um, and we also make it, because you are, you're interactive. You're it yeah. for the night, you know. And you'd That's never be, ever be able to investigate these places otherwise. No. When's the next one, and where is it going to be? Uh, we're going to start up again in January. The last one took place at the public house. In Sturbridge. In Sturbridge, and then five days before that in the Colonial Inn in Concord, Mass. Okay. And uh, then we did a couple at the uh, Tavern on Main in Chipatchet, Rhode Island. Okay. Yeah. And what's coming up this next year? Next, in January, we're going to do, we're going to start up again, do another public house, another Colonial Inn, and another Tavern on Main one. Well, what, what is, is it like at night? Well, obviously, it must yeah, be in the evening, time. yeah. It's at night. You come in and you have dinner, and yep. that's included in the whole thing. Yeah, all-you-can-eat buffet. And right. those places, are, you know, the food is five mm. stars. So. Or you can have buffet. Then after that... You guys tell them about what you're going to do. You're going to go into each room. Right. And you have to, what do they call that? I've seen it on the paranormal shows. What's that thing called? Oh, we got EMF meters yeah. and K2 meters. And we've got um, ghost boxes and REM pods and REM pods that look like old-fashioned candles yeah. because, you know, that, that's more yeah. uh, dialing the tarot cards. We show you how to use the dowsing rods. Um, you can use pendulums and mats, um, the, the grids. we got everything. Dowsing rods, but it's yeah, got to find like on a beach to find the rings and stuff. Yeah, but it, it, it looks for energy, actually. So it, oh, it does energy too. Yeah, so um, we've had in cases where we've had four or five people holding the rods and if <laughs> someone asked a question and they all went in one direction or the other direction all together, but the people weren't facing each other. No. So they can't go look, oh, he went that way, okay. They're not even facing each other, so they can't see what the other person's rods are doing. And at the very end, when you're, they're all done, you all come together, back together, yeah. and you talk about the results. Yeah, we talk a little about the results, and then we'll go home and go over all the evidence, because we're, we're filming it and we're recording it at the same time. We have the recorders. We use the best digital recorders, and we actually use reel-to-reel -reel recorders from the 1960s. Reel-to-reel? -reel. Yeah, reel-to-reel. Like the -reel. kind my dad had of our family. It's still the best but recording they, medium in the world. But they crippled all up. They got all, you couldn't revive them. Yeah, well, we got, we got a bunch of them. I, I was able to buy some reel-to-reel -reel tape. Condition. And they're in good condition, yeah. Huh, we're talking <laughs> with Tom D'Agostino. He is a paranormal researcher, and he is an investigator. And, Tom, if they would like you to come, and give maybe a presentation, talk about your book, whatever. How can people reach you? They can reach us at uh, www.tomdagostino.com or www.diningwiththedead1031.com. Either one will take you to uh, where you can contact us. Now, don't be scared by this dining by the dead. Because <laughs> as he was just telling us, it's like, let's say you're at the Sturbridge Public House. You have a nice dinner there, right? And... Um, <clears throat> And then they go into the different rooms. You could take the, the ghost hunting material, all this and that. Yep. And at the end, they come together, and Tom will share with them, okay, this is what we've got. This is pretty interesting. I mean, I would think, you, how many people do you draw? Well, we, we keep it down to like 50, 52. Wow. Th that way, yeah. when we break into the four groups, the yeah. groups are smaller, and it's a more intimate experience. Because yeah. we could have up to 100, but we, oh, I'm I'm not sure. at all. I'm not, sure. We don't want that. They don't want that. So yeah. we keep them small. Yeah. And, and the best part about it, again, is if we, let's say, do the public house, we get the stables, we get the very haunted room 40, we get the ballroom, all these places you would never ever be able to investigate on your own. Yeah. But we get them when we do the Colonial Inn, uh, they give us like the, um, that's the roll room and room 24 and room 27, which were the operating rooms in the morgue. And we have those for the night as well. Yeah. So you would never be able to do that on your own. And so well, that's what makes it even what more about, like, you exclusive. You go back to each time over the public house. Do you get the same results or very often very different results? Sometimes the same yeah, and sometimes a little different. But we do get a lot of the same things, like the same names, like Becky comes up a lot Becky. in the ballroom, yep, uh, saying help. Um, up in room 40, Arlene has had, she takes room 40, I'll take the ballroom. We've had uh, where she's got the smell of like funeral flowers a couple of times, oh. just whisk through and bot blow right by everybody and all of a sudden gone. Yeah. And um, another woman goes to a woman up there, so it's pretty interesting. It sounds it. You know, when I look at when I look at 
um, Tom. I think of, did anybody ever tell you you look like a little bit, a little bit like Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne? Everybody tells look you that. Look at the outfit he's wearing. Everybody <laughs> tells that. And, and even Jack, I did a show with him a couple of years ago. Oh, his he's son. Fine. Oh. And he even said I look like his father. <laughs> you know, Jack doesn't look a thing like him. No, I know, no. I think the kids look more like her. Yeah, sure. I know yeah. definitely the daughter does. But have you probably seen it? Um, the Osbournes want to believe. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. not on often enough. He's in, he's in trouble with that Parkinson's. Yeah. You can tell. He can't even sit oh. still. He's, he's, <laughs> I thought that was um, <laughs> He's all over the lot with the Parkinson's. Uh, that's a very clever show. But did he move? Did they moved to Britain. He, he got sick of the United yeah, States. Yeah, they moved back. They got, got sick of living in Los Angeles or what's, whatever. That's what's going on. He got fed up with all the tap, the stress. So he's got. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not a ghost. That's his cell phone. Is it, is <laughs> yeah. it, okay. Now, you have your next book coming up, and that's called again what now? It, the book, the next book that's coming out, which will be next year, it'll be coming out, yeah. is Ghosts of King Philip's War. Yep, that's the one about, we were talking about King Philip's War. Yeah, and you can go to visit all these places that are supposedly haunted or have legends, and it's got a lot of old, older legends and cool stories and, yeah, you know, just haunted little sites and, and m m memorials and mockers. It's, right. it's excellent. It's really awesome. Where are you going to be appearing coming up, let's say, in the beginning of the first year? Where are you going to be? Besides doing the uh, the public house and that type of thing, are you going to be on radio? You have said you've been on what, Fox something TV. Yeah, we, um, we did a television episode for Fox Nations called Fright Night. Like right America's, night. yeah, America's Ooh, haunted okay. hotels. Yeah, and we did a. Uh, it's on the Colonial Inn, so yeah. we did a segment with that. Where's that now? Uh, in Concord, Mass. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we of course we did one called uh, American Vampires for Fox Nation. That's a documentary. Oh, cool. That tells about the vampire scare of New England yeah. you know, from the 17 and 1800s. Um, and we did an episode at the public house for a place, a show called Doc Echoes, Doc which is, I think they're on, going to be on Amazon Prime starting in 2024. Now, I know that a couple of years back, you were on WBZ. Yeah. With what, I can't think of his name. Dan Ray. Dan Ray. Is he still on? Oh, every <laughs> night. I still listen to him every night when I'm yeah. on the way home from my store. If I'm, you know, I wish they hadn't gotten rid of... Um, I was I preferred more of the guys like around midnight and on. Oh yeah. What was his name? He There's was a Morgan a, show. Light Morgan was good, but there He's, was another guy before. Yeah. Uh, uh, he was like lightweight. They had that famous. You must know of him. Um, Oh, he was, he's a historian, not paranormal, but historian, and I can't think of his name, but he was always on the show. But see, I'm a night owl, so I would go to sleep listening to all this stuff. <laughs> when you were on Dad Ray, I had to have missed you because you were on earlier, right? Right, yeah, from 8 to 10. Now, have you been on over at uh, over in Worcester at all, WTAG? No, I haven't, no. You get yourself uh, on that. We, we did one for WBZ Television last uh, on, on October 30th. You did? With, yeah, uh, and um, that was pretty wild because it, it took place in room 27 of the Colonial Inn in Concord, mm -hmm. and the uh, spirit box actually spoke to the girl who was hosting the little show. What did they think? Well, when we were when we were actually before we went on, she goes, um, "We're going to be on live in five minutes, live, you know, five yeah. minutes or four minutes. I'm not sure." So I'm going to go call a producer, and all of a sudden the fear box goes, "Brianna, Stop Brianna, yeah." It starts talking, yeah, and she goes, "That, that's the producer. That's who I'm calling." Yeah, and then um, she asked if it was Colonial Inn or Conquest Colonial Inn, and the spirit box goes both, and it is called both. Yeah. And then when we were on, on live, uh, she puts the mic up to it, you know, see if it says anything. Yeah. And she goes, well, I guess the spirits are camera shy. They don't want to, you know, talk on camera. And then goes, sorry. Oh, <laughs> it did? It's yeah. <laughs> Tom, what would you say in well, all the places you have been in New England, what, it, uh, what impressed you the most as being maybe the most haunted? What uh, really? Maybe one or two places that really got you. Yeah. Um, the Colonial Inn and Conk is one of them. 
and actually it was rated as the most haunted inn in America recently. Um, the Tavern on Main in Chapachet, Rhode Island, is something happens there almost every week. People still call us and give us emails and say, you wouldn't believe I was having dinner there. And uh, a place called the Ramtail Factory, which is an old village in Mill, and the ruins of it, in the middle of the woods in Foster, Rhode Island. Yeah. And that, <clears throat> that people still see the light of the guy walking the ghost of him, the guy who was supposedly made his rounds in the ghostly light, and they hear he? the bell. His name was Peleg Walker, and he supposedly committed suicide in the factory um, in 1822. Yeah. Another person committed suicide in the factory in 1817 also. What was going on in there? I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty it was strange dealings going on because I guess he owed the factory money and uh, they were trying to throw him out of the partnership. And then the next thing you know, um, they have uh, deeds drawn up a day and night before he died, about a day before he died. But they're drawn up at quarter to one in the morning yeah. And back in 1822, all you had was candlelight, and who the heck would be up at that hour? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. they all had the farm and whatnot. Yeah. And then he was found, you know, on the Sunday, he didn't show up for church, and they, where they, is they he? Knew. And they found him there, boom, yeah. Was were you, as a kid, were you into paranormal then too, Tom? Oh, yeah, yeah. Big time. Oh, yeah. Were you, like, the only child, or one of many? No, it was one of nine. Nine? Yeah. <laughs> oh, your poor mother. Was it the baby? I'm in the middle. You're the middle child. Yeah, I'm about the middle. Were you the only one who was into paranormal? No, my brother Donald is into it. He's the next older. Yeah. And my sister Yvette and my sister Mary are into it as well, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. Not, not your parents, no, but grandparents, nothing like that. No, they no, they never were like my mother loved to watch the shows too. Yeah, but yeah. you know, whatever little one they, there wasn't too many back then. I think yeah. Leonard Nimoy did one in the seventies and stuff oh, like that. Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, oh. so it wasn't like you know, like they have today, every turn channel you turn, yeah. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> oh I know, haunted this and that, but yeah. uh, I love that Osborne. Oh my god, I love yeah, that. Yeah, the Osborne's one um, I believe. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Oh golly, it just went right out of my mind. Oh oh I know. When you left high school, did what was your direction? What did you think? Uh, let's see. Well, we had a family business. So I was helping that, but I went to college just uh, to see what I wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. And um, but uh, two years out of high school, uh, you know, I was in um, college studying just um, d different stuff. I was also doing a trade school, going to trade school for auto mechanics, and okay. I wanted to be an auto mechanic. That's and that why you're good with your Toyota. Yeah, okay. I fixed my own cars. Yep, <laughs> and but. Uh, a few years after that, when I was in Rhode Island College, and I stayed in a house that was wicked, I mean unbelievably haunted. My yeah. friend bought it, but he wasn't living there. He just was going to flip it. Yeah. But he said, hey, if you want to stay the winter, I need someone to just watch the piping and make sure, you know, it's so nothing you bad happens. So I said, I'll move in. And I lasted six days because the stuff that was happening in that house was insane. And that's when I started studying, along with political science and things, I started studying, like, physical sciences, esoterical sciences, like meteorology and um, astronomy and philosophy and everything, uh, sociology, just to see where, why or why, what does, why does this happen? Yeah. Is there any explanation that may be gained from any of or all of those? And, and so you know, what did you do? You were there? What did you hear? What did you feel? Um, well, we saw one night, we saw something in the living room standing there glowing. Yeah. And another night, um, when we, a few of us were hanging out at the top of the stairs, something, we were at the third floor, and something just blew the door open and started bolting up the stairs. We thought it was some lunatic, and all that blew by us was wind. Yeah. We'd hear noises like people moving the, what was left of the furniture let, that was left over downstairs, yeah. and we'd put powder on the floor, and we'd hear the noises, but yet we'd go the next day, and the powder was undisturbed. Things like that. Um, we we voices uh, that that one time it sounded like the kitchen table was overthrown and we went running in there and nothing but it was loud it was so loud and we were outside you. we that heard it got you and you knew so you were were you still in college at that time yeah yeah so at that point did you decide the heck with what I'm doing here in college I'm going into this uh not yeah at the same time that's when I started studying other things and I wanted to study more to understand why is this happening and, and why are we hearing this or things like that happening but yet um you know it's 
you're, you're like, there's no explanation for it, and then nobody can say, well, you know, okay, uh, until we can sit down at like Elvis and Jim Morrison, you know, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is if they did, uh, or <laughs> have a, invite a ghost to dinner, yeah. we don't know what's going on. So I kept continued to study, you know, my political science things, but those, those electives you got to take, I chose all those other things for electives. Yeah. And um, at that point, you know, I, I was also teaching music, so. Wow, what a lot of talent going on. You are. <laughs> Kind of an entrepreneurial personality too, which I relate to because I am too. I mean, we get so many ideas, right? Yeah. That which one do I run with next? Yeah, right. It's sort of like taking spaghetti and throwing <laughs> it against the wall and see if it sticks, right? Tom, how could people get a hold of you? They can contact me at www.tomdagostino.com. That's D A G O S T I N O. Or www.diningwiththedead1031.com. And it's kind of funny because somebody, uh, one of our friend's mothers said, Hey, did you know that Tom has the word ghost in his last name, the G O S T? And I'm like, I never even knew that. And I've had my last name since I was born and never thought about it. No, <laughs> it I mean, so you know, I never did either. Yeah, Tom it's so funny. Is that Italian, Tom? Yeah, it is Italian. It's pre- I don't think I've ever heard say Italian with apostrophe, but. Yeah, it means from or uh, of. And I think it's Augustus from uh, the family of Augustus Caesar. Now, we've just a couple of minutes left. Uh, coming up, okay, mm. so in December, do you have one of those uh, at the uh, public house or anything? Anything coming up in December for people to look forward to? No, because uh, we like to take the holidays off. Everyone's all going nuts and everything. And, yeah, okay. You know. But we have to wait till January. Yeah, have to and wait then you'll January. be at the Colonial House or the just uh, the uh, public house? We'll be doing one at the public house, then the Colonial Inn. Okay. You can, they can look at the Dining with the Dead to see okay. the events as they come up. Yeah, don't be scared by the Dining with the Dead. You get a nice dinner. It's, it's just a way of putting it that yeah, you're going to go through looking at different rooms for the just Yeah, investigate. You ever have people who just like, I can't take it anymore and leave? <laughs> We had a few people freak out before. Yes, yeah, certain things that happened. One time, a, a tablecloth just lifted up by itself <laughs> off the table, and boom, a few people were out of that room. They were out, gone. Oh, no, they were gone, yeah. Ta- um, Tom, is there, what is the price of somebody who wants to, to do this with you? The night's about $70. Okay, and that includes the dinner? And Giveaways, how- we give away 20-something items, two T-shirts, books, everything. Ooh, it's sort of like you can win these, like a raffle? Yeah, we give you a ticket when you walk in, and then we pick out the numbers bet- after dinner and between the breaking of the groups. And sounds good to me. That sounds like, how many hours? Uh, it's a couple hours. It goes like from 6.30, let's say, to 9.30. Sounds really good. Are kids all ages welcome? Yeah, yes. Yes, okay, we do so have a lot of children come, too. too. They can go, too. This sounds good. I mean, hey, grandparents out there, parents, that would be kind of fun. If you have a, a young one who's interested in this, what better, who better to talk to than Tom D'Agostino? Because are you going to be on TV coming up at all besides here? Do you have anything yet? Scheduled? Yeah, just that Fox Nation. Yep. And um, so two Fox Nations, the... Um, and the Amazon Prime next year, the Doc Echoes when it Fox, what are the, what are the hmm, I guess those channel numbers are different in every town. So. Yeah, they are. But if they go to your site, they'll find all this out. And right, don't forget, yeah. this book is out now. New yeah. England's Haunted Route 44. This is out. You can get that now at the bookstores. And coming out in December is? Well, we, we're going to the publisher. It won't be coming out till next year. Oh, till the next year. And what's yeah. the name of it again? The Ghost of King Phillips the War. King Phillips War. Yeah. And uh, Reverend Blackstone's in there because they, they somewhere between moving his monument yeah. and his bones, yeah. they lost him. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> they, think he, they think the box may have gotten thrown, they into, lost this guy. Yeah, thrown into the uh, landfill in Johnston <laughs> or in the dump somewhere, his remains. So that's why he's missing. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, what do they say? At least his spirit might not be missing. There you go, yeah. The he's got a big monument, physical. you know, still. Do you ever go to graveyards? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those f- fascinate me. But, you know, some people do um, the graveyard girls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they yeah. do all kinds of stuff. Okay, we've got to go. We've got to be back on again. Don't worry. We'll probably get you on next year. There you go. We'll Listen, see you next you. time and be my guest. Thank you. Riding on a shooting star. Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer Than it seems 